water is a place that I feel super comfortable. I think it just gives me the right kind of stimulation. Nothing's jarring, everything's very gentle, everything moves in a beautiful way. Things move in slow motion, sounds are kind of muted. And people, when they move through water, are elegant. I, as a kid, for a while I was on a swim team in high school. When I was sick in my 20s with migraines, I was made to go swimming again and uh, rediscovered water. And this particular place had skylights. And I used to watch the, on a sunny day the patterns, you know, move through the water. And it was just mesmerizing. And I got fit enough in the water to just use it as my office, the way I meditate. All my ideas started to come through the water. Barb is really a nose to the grindstone uh, kind of artist. She works so hard, she's so tenacious about what she does. She's so meticulous, obviously, very detail oriented. But you always have this impression that she loves what she does so much. She's so passionate about it. It probably never really feels like that much work. But I think she has a streak in her that can be obsessive. She was always passionate about swimming. But then when I realized it was more than just, you know, the athleticism of it, it was the, the headspace of it. It was the way she internalized it all. And that whole dreamlike thing that she strives for in her work really is a reflection of her desire, I think, to maybe escape. And it's wonderful because her work really does make you feel like you're escaping when you really look at it. It just totally transposes you and it takes you to some pretty interesting places. I'm always looking for an unusual way to see something. And I like to switch things up and shoot things in a way that you've never seen before. Make it a new visual experience for people. I guess the barbacle style is that it's not realistic. There's always something, if you look at it, that doesn't make sense. In the case of the water work, the natural lens of the water distorts. I do my artwork from a very intuitive place. I plan and pre-plan a lot of it, but when I'm shooting and I see the result of the planning and I say, oh my God, this is going to work. That's such an amazing feeling. And I think that um, as much as possible, I feel my pictures are a success when they feel authentic to the viewer. So I had this idea that it would be very cool if I could have the perspective of people walking on water and unobserving from below. And I'm thinking, how can I do this? And then started thinking it through. Now, since March, I've had a lot of trouble with people building this apparatus because everybody saw the inherent danger of a woman underneath some glass, you know, 12 foot expansive glass in the water. And today I know it will work. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take the, the amount of time I've set aside for it to get comfortable with it and have the vision that I want to happen, but it's definitely gonna work. I always get the idea first and then I have to figure out how to do it. Um, it's not always water-based. In fact, you know, I've had 30 years of experience. The last 10 years have been water-based. Who would have thought that this is what I'd be doing? I'm so shocked because I had no idea what I wanted to do in my life. I dropped out of school and I modeled. Then I got hired as a fashion writer and all of a sudden the photographers were asking me to look through the viewfinder and see what I thought. And I realized this is something that I felt like I could do. And then I picked up a camera and then I learned the darkroom and little by little I found my way until I started becoming a full out photographer. I loved the physicality of photography. I loved the fact that you just loaded your film and you shot X number of frames carefully and it was all 
tactile, you know, you then went into your dark room and you processed the film and then you hung it to dry and then you cut it up and you looked at it and you, f you then enlarged your piece and then you dried on racks and then you flattened it and then you painted it and it was just such a wonderful feeling. I basically found myself when I found photography. She did one wonderfully artistic um, shoot for us uh, once for an issue that was themed artistry in fashion, um, where she teamed up with Lucien Matisse, who of course now is uh, quite a, a well-known uh, designer uh, on the Canadian scene. And together they pitched this idea to us, where a Lucien would paint these fantastic fashion illustrations on plexiglass, and then they had this gorgeous nude model that would stand behind the illustrated garment, you know, just in the perfect position so she'd all be covered. So she looked like she was wearing the garment, almost like a take on, you know, cutouts, those paper doll uh, cutouts in their clothes. It was a wonderful, wonderful, magical shoot and really one of my favorite uh, shoots that we did in the six years that we were doing FQ magazine. It was a, a new concept. Um, I had to kind of do a few tests to, uh, you know, I had a nude model behind, so we kind of had to work with her angle and make sure that, you know, she's actually dressed and not half nude. So uh, we ended up um, doing a creative together. It was very successful, looked very beautiful. You don't even know what's reality and what's not. And we took it a little further than just painting. I did collages and three-dimensional textures. All his career, he's allowed us to put the most incredibly delicate and Well, this Beautiful. is perfect, you know it, because this actually is inspired yeah. by nature. You know, all these that are like rock formations and stuff, so yeah. I think it looked beautiful on you. I love Barbara. The moment we met, we clicked. It was like such a beautiful synergy of creative energies. Okay, so let's put it on and let's, yeah. let's yeah. get going. I love her outside of the box kind of thoughts and ideas and, and it's always kind of pushing the boundaries and you know, I come from a fashion background so it's nice to kind of mix fashion and art. Fashion, costume, wardrobe has always been extremely important. Whether it's clothing or whether it's just fabric, it doesn't matter what, but it's always part of the concept. I use costume, I use wardrobe, I use location as the source of my inspiration. It just has to be a way of adding some texture and in-camera texture to, to the actual picture. For the underwater shoot, it's more of a textured material. It has to be a little looser, more transparent, a lot of ruffles, a lot of detailing that are more flowy and fluid, you know? So you can't really put like a heavily constructed garment underwater because it doesn't do the effect that it's supposed to do when you have these transparencies and the coloration also has to be either very strong or very muted or white, you know, so it's quite interesting. It's always a test and a challenge. I love it. I need so much weight because I am a very airy person, <laughs> apparently. I'm buoyant. <laughs> A normal shoot is tiring by the end of the day, but when you're underwater, you are exhausted. It's challenging because it's cold, it's wet, it's dangerous. We're using electricity. You're holding your breath, puts a lot of pressure on your head, and you have to be able to see, which has always been a huge challenge because, you know, I wear contacts, I wear glasses, I've got goggles adapted for glasses. Right now I'm wearing contacts and glasses. <laughs> so it's like, by the end of the day, you know, can't see a thing. When I was shooting in the studio, if I got tired, I'd just sit down on the sofa and chat for a while with somebody. Not here. Once you get in the water it is definitely a different experience. Today I was on top of the water. I've done three other shoots with Barbara Ware. I've been in the water. The clothes move very differently. You move differently. You're battling with your hair. You're battling with everything once you're in the water. Other than that, it's just trying to feel that flow and let things be organic within the water. 
For me, I have to take a very artistic approach to it and find the character within myself. Some photographers give you, I want this. With Barbara, it's more of a collaboration, which I really enjoy. And a lot of that inspiration does come from the clothes, whether I'm playing on the new niche of the material with the red sparkles and trying to figure out how that can play with the light or trying to use the cloudiness of the white dress. So I definitely pull inspiration from the clothes that I'm wearing. I met Barbara maybe about a year before I actually jumped into the pool with her and she was our chief photographer for Entertainment Tonight Canada's publicity shoot. I had no idea that she was an Olympic athlete and she started talking to me about that and I started telling her about a project that I was working on in the summer that required people to jump full on in the water over and over again and she said, oh, I'm in. Just being in the water in a teeny tiny little bikini, I was surrounded and comforted by the water. I didn't feel insecure, and it revealed to me just how much I really loved my body. It was a very, very revealing shoot for me. It was a revelation to me. So it was a shoot that I was surprisingly comfortable with, and although I didn't know the full outcome, I didn't picture it completely, I had this feeling of such a comfort and ease. It was so rewarding the instant I stepped out of the pool and it was done, I went, wow, that, that felt really good. For a lot of reasons, I felt that I delivered what Barb, the photographer, wanted to get that heavenly, mysterious kind of body of work, yet still very strong at the same time. And uh, she does that through various techniques, but she also does it through her eye and her love for the human form and her amazing imagination. So bring it in a little tighter. Okay. okay. I'd change your hand position on uh, Mal's hand. Yep. Yeah. It's just, it's very mysterious. Okay. Directing underwater is more like survival. <laughs> but it's great because everyone's real honest. Once you get really soaking wet and there's no makeup and your hair is everywhere and you're choking for breath, <laughs> you, know, you go, okay, this is what we're gonna do now. You're panting and they're panting and you get into the groove of it and then you show them the monitor and they go, oh, I see what you see now. Okay, I can do this. So it's really collaboration. That's the keeper. To shoot something like fashion with that degree of movement to it in that way is very interesting. I mean, that's why we first started to love fashion on television because essentially it's about movement. It's about the way we move through the world or the way the garment moves through the world. So when you're talking about a totally different, you know, atmosphere and a totally different environment for fashion and, and what can it do in those, you know, extraordinary conditions, uh, she's had tons of incredible results. People don't quite know where to place me because I don't really see a lot of people doing what I do. I am not a photographer, I'm not a painter, but I treat my pictures as if they are paintings. And I'm in that in-between ground, and especially with photography. This show, I decided to use wigs so I wouldn't have to deal with hair or makeup. So they put a Speedo cap on and then we pinned the wig on as best as we could. And by blurring the shutter speed, we were able to get a beautiful wind-blown effect. It's about creating a hybrid. And that's what I'm doing. I believe I'm creating work that is unique. And some people just haven't caught on to what I'm doing yet. They think it's all Photoshop. They don't get that everything in the frame was put there by me. Other people are documenting places, people, things, objects. I document my imagination. They're stunning. They are absolutely They're so stunning. Absolutely. Well, these pieces were all shot um, above the water. For the first time, I wasn't in the water, and the girls were. Uh, I was on a tower looking down with, uh, and it was all done in camera. So every color and whatever, it's all right there in the camera. 
Barbara's work is totally original. It uses the female figure in ways that are totally unusual to contemporary photography in Canada. She's referencing art history and modern contemporary painting in the States and incorporating the figure into, into a landscape of color, using the water as a lens through which we see the color and the figure is totally unique. Barbara recognizes that there's a market for her work and that her ability to satisfy that market through considering her color choices and the composition of her work is secondary to her creation but paramount in her representation. So through the gallery, through this commercial venue, she recognizes that the market is an important factor. Her imagination knows no bounds. She might be small, but her dreams and her ideas and her spirit is huge. She is determined to have her artwork make a statement and yet still determined to remain true to her ideas and her dreams. Most recently, I would say that a lot of my work goes into big installations, some public, some private. I also had a unique opportunity to create a very beautiful, serene space at Princess Margaret Hospital. That came about because my aunt, who is a very beautiful person as well as a famous actress in Canada, Toby Robbins, died of breast cancer 25 years ago, and we all loved her so much. The family always wanted to find ways to honor her. I did so in a traveling show for breast cancer called Survivors in Search of a Voice. But later on, my uncle, who is on the board of Princess Margaret Hospital, was designing a space, an atrium space for cancer research and care. It took about three, four months to create, and I get emails from people all the time saying, I saw your work, and it gave me great sense of serenity. It was a lovely place for them to sit and to be, and that was the whole reason to do it. I needed a one-two punch. I shoot underwater, and in Toronto that is five months max, and afterwards I really need to shoot again, and I wasn't inspired by digital anymore. I just couldn't do it. I found out about this Ambrotype seminar, and uh, the whole idea intrigued me. It gives you a great respect for photography as a medium and the practitioners of that time. I was intrigued by the idea of actually cutting my own glass, making one-of-a-kind images, making my own film. I could control the process. And on the other hand, it was so exciting to be able to create a unique object and stay within the realm of photography. You're really making a picture. You really have to commit to that image. And I just loved that idea. I found that was the kind of image I was willing to make. You know, it's kind of magic. And I'm working on a series right now that's interesting. And it's just about people's fascination with the dollar store, including my own. You can walk in there and come out with some incredibly wonderful things. If you shoot it right and you expose it right and you put it in the right setting, you've got an image that looks like a million dollars. The gear comes mostly from the States. I, it took me about a year to collect everything. Um, at first I was working out of a cardboard box, a television box that was my darkroom, but I found somebody who does this for a living. He makes portable darkrooms. The chemicals were tricky because you can't get certain things in Canada and of course you can't ship certain things across the border. So, uh, you know, that was a little tricky, but I managed to get around that. I had the same feeling about the camera that I have about making ambrotypes. I had never used an 810 camera before, 
but I fell in love with Deerdorf, the beauty of the camera, it's just a piece of art. So I started buying it piece by piece on eBay, and when I finally collected all the parts that I thought I needed, then I hired some assistant, and I didn't tell him I didn't know how to use the camera, but I gave him the pieces, and I said, so how does this thing go together? <laughs> he goes, really? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of it, and I've loved it ever since. That was about 10 years ago. The key thing is that you need that kind of camera for this kind of process, and there I had it. So it was meant to be. It's just perfect collision of all these things that I love. I think she's very brave. I think she's very fearless. I think she's always pushing it. Unlike other photographers who, you know, like maybe so see the world a certain way and consistently and constantly want to capture that, she's always playing with things technically. And I, I give her, you know, great credit for that. And, and wanting to do things that are very dreamlike. I mean, there is something very dreamlike about her vision in general, but she's always trying to take you to another world in some other way. And her subject matter always has a great sense of romance and mystery to it. I'm never retiring. I'm going to be that woman who has the gray hair and braids and the cat, and I'm going to be, you know, out in nature creeping up a hill with, you know, the camera planting it on the ground and dark cloth over my head, and then it's going to like faint, and that will be the end of me. But you'll, you know, the plate will be done, I'm sure. <laughs> It'll be finished. But that's how I see the world. I think that's what it is, is I see the world through photography. It could be that I'm afraid to see the world realistically, and I need that barrier, but thank God I have something that allows me to see the world, <laughs> whether it's uh, through a shield or not. You know, it's taken me to some amazing places, and it's given me so much confidence, and it turned me into a person that I never would have been without it. Mm -hmm.